Hello, welcome back uh, for another discussion here and for me to share another Yanomami story. Uh, this time here up on the monitor, I have a picture of one of my cousins making a smoke rack and he is smoking giant armadillo, uh, somebody in the village that had caught uh, here nearby. And um, the armadillo meat was, it was okay, but um, after eating or consuming a lot of this meat, it gave me one of the worst diarrhea that I've ever had in my entire life. And that is a story for another day. But what I want to talk about with you today is uh, here in the Poconos where I live, uh, it's September, end of September, almost October, and the climate is beginning to change. There are the leaves, the foliage are turning into stunning reds and beautiful yellows and captivating orange oranges and it's one of my favorite seasons of the year. The summer is ending, fall is here, and winter is nearing. And um, though the foliage is changing, there's another aspect of my life that changes during the season and that has to deal with my, my body. And uh, the other day, uh, I woke up and uh, I had excruciating pain in my left eye. And eye pain is just one of the one of the worst kinds of pain ever, you know? I feel like I've, I've, I've sustained a lot of injuries in my life, but eye pain is, is just one of the worst. Um, and that's how I know that winter is coming because the air is dry, it's getting cold, and my eyes are drying out. And every year this happens to me. And it brings me back to uh, the time when I first sustained that injury in 2013. So it started out, uh, we're in, in the village of Irokai, just like any other day. Um, this It was a relatively new village, Shabanol, that, that my family had built. So just outside the perimeter, there was all this uh, shrubbery and vines and trees that just needed to be cleared out. And I noticed that every every hearth, every family unit designated by a hearth is responsible for sort of clearing out that land. And one day I was just relaxing in my hammock and I noticed my brother, Ricky, uh, my late brother Ricky, uh, was clearing out uh, his, his hearth and his area. So I decided to go help out the guy and uh, grab the machete and join him. And Ricky and I had, during 2013, a wonderful time together. You know, he was always, he was, we were attached at the hip. You know, he taught me how to shoot a Yanomami bow and arrow. I taught him how to read time on a watch. And it was just uh, such a great time sharing language, culture, and technologies with each other. We were just two brothers, you know, doing some yard work in our Yanomami village. I had a machete and I was kind of hacking away and clearing some brush. And I noticed there was a small tree it was kind of a, a large bush. It was in between a large bush and a small tree uh, um, that I wanted to, to, to cut down. So um, it wasn't very difficult. I cut the trunk, and when I went to pull the tree away, it didn't move. It didn't budge at all. It was uh, entangled by all of these vines to a nearby nearby log. So with my machete, I said, okay, well, uh, the only way to free... Um, this tree is to, to cut away all the vines. So it took me a few minutes. I started hacking and hacking. There was just so many vines. It was like a spaghetti of vines that just sort of encapsulated this tree. And finally, I when I felt like I cleared uh, enough of the vines away, I grabbed the tree and I made a huge mistake. I pulled with the same amount of force as I did before the tree was tangled with all the vines. So it snapped forward and one of the branches caught me dead in my left eye and I just simply yelped and screamed in pain. I fell to the ground and I tried to open my eye but I remember seeing just sort of this black dot in my field of vision and I knew that this was bad. This was really bad and I was just writhing in pain. My brother rushed over um, and I, <laughs> I didn't speak Yanomami so I tried to kind of reenact what happened. I couldn't open my eyes and at the same time I was showing him that a branch had caught me in the eye and I think he understood. So he put my 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 arm around the shoulder and he and he guided me back to my hammock. So I laid there in the hammock writhing in pain and thinking, oh man, this is bad. And any kind of injury for me in the Amazon is susceptible to infection. Uh, but an infection in the eye, that could be really, really bad. A commotion had stirred around the village and I, I, can, I, I couldn't see anything, but the Yanomami, my family were gathering around me. You can hear the chattering and, and, and my brother and my mom were speaking to each other rapidly. And then my mom approached and she put her hand on my chest and there's nothing like a, um, a comforted feeling like a mother's touch, but um, she continued to 
pry my eyelid open to investigate and I was just I started whimpering <laughs> and and I remember the, the the some of the other women and the children started laughing and they were they were mocking me and they were mim mimicking my whimper and leave it to the Yanomami to uh, make light of any situation I think I remember laughing a little bit at them laughing at me but <laughs> nevertheless you know I was still in a lot of pain so mom carefully pried my eyelid open and when she did it was followed by a bunch of oohs and ahs and I'm like well I don't you know that's not very comforting and then she forcefully blew uh, um, air into my eye and it hurt so bad and I was just screaming in pain and then mom did it again a couple more times and I, I just said no more please you know I'm in so much pain I don't exactly remember how uh, I saw this maybe for a, there was a glimpse but my, my brother had whittled down on a very fine point at the end of the stick and my mom had continued to pry my eyelids open again and then my brother with the end of the stick started digging debris out of my eyeball and at this point I was just in so much pain and finally I told everyone I'd stop please just I'm done. I don't I'm done with the torture just let me give me a moment of peace and think about things and every time I tried to twitch or move my eyeball, it just shot excruciating pain throughout my entire body. So I forced myself to to just sort of, you know, remain calm and, and enter sort of a meditative state in my hammock as I just um, kind of bared through that entire night. And, and I could, there were a couple times where I got maybe 15, 20 minutes of sleep, but other times I was just in so much pain that um, I didn't really sleep much at all. So the next morning, Everyone had gathered around my hammock and I'm still blind in my hammock and in a lot of pain and then my mom continued to open my eyelid again and my vision is very blurry. I couldn't see anything. I sustained a lot of damage and, and my vision was really blurry so I saw, I, I could see bodies and heads but I just couldn't make out who they were. Then mom went ahead and called someone from across the village. I couldn't tell who she called because I didn't know Yanomami, but uh, this sort of figure came towards me. Soon after, uh, I felt two uh, liquid drops uh, in my left eye and uh, they immediately provided relief and comfort. And I was thinking, oh my gosh, you know this, and the drops felt like the drops that you put in your eye when you um, have dry eyes or when you're using Visine um, um, drops. And I remember thinking, I'm saved, right? Like this, I can't believe that uh, here in the jungle, this is what I had thought that someone in the village had drops um, or, or antibiotics. And I thought this had to be antibiotics. This had to have been leftover medicine from, from, a, from a trip from a doctor that had visited that ter territory uh, maybe not too long ago. And for a few moments, I just felt this calming feeling throughout my body and the pain was gone and it was lubricating for my eye and I could, I could give myself a few hours of peace and rest. And I thought, okay, well, whatever this this is this might give me a shot uh, or give me a chance to heal my eye and get my vision back and try to really truly assess my damage so throughout the day two three four times throughout the day you know I, I again felt these you know um, soothing drops in my eye and I was in a much you know I felt much more secure and confident still it was a long night and again I woke up a lot with a lot of pain but the next morning mom again pried my eyelid open and this time I could see a little bit. Um, so my, some of my, my eye had, had healed to the point where some of my vision was coming back. And again, my mom called um, someone over and I noticed it was a girl. And this girl came up to me and I recognized her. It was one of my wives um, or what I would call her, my wife. And uh, don't jump to conclusions here. Uh, you know, this is a story for another video, but what I would call her uh, in that in that village is, is my wife. So I just call her wife. And so I saw her and I looked up at her and I was I smiled and I was like really happy. I'm like, oh, so you're the one with the medicine. Thank you so much. I'm so grateful. Uh, Mom held my eyelid open and then uh, my wife uh, leaned over me and she grabbed her boob and aimed her nipple right at my eye and just started squirting breast milk and flush my entire eye all over the side of my face. And I looked up at her and I'm thinking, wait a minute, I'm such an idiot. This wasn't antibiotics. I was receiving breast milk this whole time. So you gotta put into perspective that I was a kid that grew up in suburbia, New Jersey and Pennsylvania. So my concept of medicine and first aid um, 
did not, you know, include breast milk or lactating women. So this came a bit of a surprise for me. I didn't react. I remained calm and I thought, okay, well, they know what they're doing. And uh, if this is going to help, then I'll let them help. Again, throughout the day, I kept getting doses of breast milk, but it wasn't from one woman. <laughs> there was like a rotation of lactating women that came to visit me and administer their own breast milk in my eye. So um, this was an uh, interesting time. And But one of the times, the cousin of mine, she was lactating and she had approached me and she had very, very bad pink eye. And I'm thinking, oh my gosh, you know, <laughs> pink eye is so contagious. And with a damaged eye, last thing I want is some kind of conjunctive virus or infection in my eye. And, and she wanted to administer the breast milk, but I, I, you know, I didn't know what to say. So I just kind of put my hand on her chest and you know, uh, respectfully pushed her away and said, waiha, waiha, which means wait in Yanomami. And um, so she understood uh, and she just turned around and walked away. You know, I don't know much about the composition of breast milk. It contains a lot of, you know, fats and oils. Um, it contains passive antibiotics, I'm um, sorry, passive antibodies. Um, but at the same time, breast milk is not sterile. There's hundreds of different species of bacteria. And I know that some of the bacteria in breast milk is from uh, retrograde flow. Uh, from the oral uh, bacteria of a suckling baby. And I was just so afraid of getting um, an infection. But little by little, I was nursed and eventually to the point where I could open my eye. And what happened during that injury is I severely damaged my cornea. And when I returned home to the United States, I went to an ophthalmologist and he looked into my eye and he noticed that there was still a lot of debris in there. What happened was, is that every time I try to open my eyelid, it keeps ripping apart these cells and damaging these healing cells and it's not getting a chance to heal. The ophthalmologist went ahead and scraped up all the dead debris in the cells and, and he put on a uh, contact lens to sort of serve as a protective shield to ha give my cornea a chance to heal. It's still, it's healed, but it's damaged. It's, I would have to say it's scarred because every year without fail, when winter time comes, I get a repeat of this episode of pain in my eye and I can't open it. And it's just something I live with. It's a lasting scar from the Amazon. Hey, if you're ever in the middle of the Amazon rainforest and you hurt your eye, just look for the nearest lactating woman. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed this story and I look forward to the next one. Take care, bye.